fellow students. Hope you're doing well. Yesterday, uh, you had your lesson, your first lesson, with measures of variation. We're going to continue, and um, I know you only had two problems, so we're going to go over those two problems, and then we're going to do a couple of more together, and then you're going to have a couple more to do until you get comfortable with these and actually really enjoy them because they're the greatest. I love them. And then we're going to learn how to read data and interpret data and understand what it means and what's our purpose for doing it, okay? See you, see you in the next slide. Okay, students, we're going to continue with our measures of variation. Um, what I've decided I was going to do that might help you out is I think I'm going to go ahead and do a just a step-by-step -step tutorial um, because there are different several steps to take to gather the measures of variation. So I'm going to go ahead and do it this way. And as you remember, I had this down on the previous one, step one step two, step three, and step four. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go through the steps with you and we're going to do both of the problems that were homework. Okay students, so here was the problems. Here were the problems that you were instructed to do. It's a room A, room B. The table shows a set of scores on a science test in two different classrooms. Compare and contrast their measures of variation. And the measures of variation we're working with are the median, quartile 1, quartile 2, and the range. So I'm going to kind of go by steps. Now what I wanted to confirm students and let you know is the essential question, let's go back to that. How are the mean, median, and mode helpful in describing data? Okay, and uh, this is the measures of variation and basically what that is is it's used to describe the distribution or the spread of specific data in this case this data right in here okay so that's what measures of variation mean okay let's go ahead and talk about the uh, vocabulary here this is a median and we know that the median is the center it's the middle the the general center of the area of the data and on one side is uh, the the lower numbers and on the other side the numbers increase but it's the center of that which is the average so Q1 students Q1 is called is actually called a quartile the first quartile and this is actually the third quartile the first and third so the first and third quartile are the medians of the data values that are less than the median. So the first is a data value that's less than quartile three. Quartile three is a data value that's more than quartile one. Because as I mentioned, when you have the center of the data, all the numbers on the left side are decreased. It's just like a number line. And then all the number on the right side have increased because you've put these numbers in sequential order from least to greatest. So that's how the data is separated. Quartile 1 is on the left side of your line. Quartile 2 is on the right side of your line. The range is going to be the difference between the greatest number and the least of the data values. Okay, so the first step, students, when you're when you're finding the measures of variations is to put all pieces in data order from the least to the greatest so that means that you need to put these two sets of numbers they're two different sets so you do these first and then you do these after two separate sets in data order so that's what we're going to do right now. That's step number one. Okay, so students, the first step, as I mentioned, was to put all the pieces of data in order from least to greatest when you are doing the measures of variation. So this is always a first step. So putting the pieces of data together from the least to greatest means placing the numbers in sequence from the lowest number to the highest number. So that's what we're going to do 
we'll go ahead and we'll do room A first. So, and I always cross them out as I go along. It looks like I have 65, 67, seventy two seventy eight eighty four oops actually I have an eighty so we're going to change this to 80. And then we'll change this to 84. See how easy it is to get the sequence out, students? 84. There we go. And then I have 87. Ninety-two. and 100. So as you could see, these numbers are in sequential order from the least to the greatest. I'm going to count to make sure that I have all the numbers right. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Nine pieces of data on room A. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, students, so this is A that we're working on, the first first set here. Now the next step, step number two, is to find the median of the data. And that's basically the center of the data, the median. So finding the center of the data. So after placing the data in order number from least to greatest, you're going to find the median or the center. Basically what that means, students, is it means the equal number on each side of the center. So this number works best. Finding that center is if you have an odd number. So we have, I believe, nine. Nine pieces of data. So that's going to work out great because that's an odd number. Now, after you've uh, you, you found that, that there's that odd number of pieces of data, if you do not have an odd number and you have an even number of pieces of data, you're going to take the two center middle ones and divide them together by two to find the median. But in this case, we don't have that, um, so we're going to go ahead and find the median. So I want to show you just an example of how you would find that median with either an odd number of pieces of data or an even number, even though we've went through this on the previous lessons. So right here we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That's very easy. The center of all of these numbers would be 8. That will be considered the median. You have three pieces of data on this side and you have three pieces of data on this side. That would be an odd number of pieces of data. That's how easy it is to find the center. Okay now let's go ahead and look at this other center here that we're looking for. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's an equal number of pieces of data. So when I say you take the two center, again, you want to have an equal amount on each side. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you're going to take these two right here. And here you have one, two, three on this side, one, two, three on this side. You're going to add these two up, which gives you 17. 
and because you only have two pieces of data it's just like finding the median you're going to divide it by two so getting my calculator and dividing 17 by 2 I get 8.5 and that is my pieces of data that is my center for the one that has an even amount of pieces of data okay so now we're gonna find the center and because we have an odd number it's going to be very easy one two three four five six seven eight nine so we're gonna go one two three four one two three four so remember when you find the center or the median when you find the center or the median there's going to be an equal amount of numbers on each side that's how you know one two three four one two three four okay students now we are on step number three we're finding the quartile one q1 and we're finding quartile three q3 okay students so after you found your median next you found the medium or the center you're going to look for q1 and Q3, the quartiles. Remember, this works best with an odd number of pieces of data. Okay, so for, for Q1, you look for the number in the center between the medium center and the first lowest number. So that would be the median and this. So, but as you could see, we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So we have an equal amount on each side. There's no center here because there's four. We need an odd number, so we need to do the one step that I suggested in the previous one is finding the median. And remember when we have an even amount this is the odd amount. When we have an even amount of data, we have to take these two numbers here, divide them, which was 17, and you divide it by the 2 to get the 8.5. So we're going to do the same thing for these quartiles. So for Q1 we take these numbers 1, 2, 3, 4 and the two centers would be these two right here. So we're going to take 67 that would be these two right here and we're going to add them. 67 plus 72 equals 139 divided by 2 equals 69.5 so put my little arrow here that's going to be called Q1 we just found quartile 1 okay now we're going to go over here and do the same thing we're going to take these two numbers Adam 87 plus 92 equals 179 divided by 2 equals 89.5 so this number is going to go here and that's going to be Q3.
Okay, students, so we have actually found three measures of variation. We found the median, we have found the median, we have found quartile one, and we have found quartile three. The last thing that we're going to work on is, the last step, is going to be finding the range. Finding the range. And to find the range, you take the largest number from this pieces of data and you subtract the lowest number. And the difference or your answer is going to be the range. So you're going to take the largest piece of data, which is 100, and subtract 65 from it. One hundred minus sixty five equals thirty five. So my range is thirty five. Okay, students, so we have found four different types of measures of variation. We found the range, we found the quartile one, we found quartile three, and then we also found the median. So we just completed the measures of variation for room A. The next we'll do is room B. Okay, now we're going to find room B room B. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put our numbers in sequential order. That's step number one. So I have a 63 65 Seventy-three, eighty-one, eighty-three. eighty seven ninety three and ninety eight let's count my pieces of data one two three four five six seven eight nine one two three four five six seven eight nine same steps apply as the previous one in A. Now we look for the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 81. 81. Median. Okay, that is the median. There you go. Let me move this out of the way here. There we go. The median. Now remember, just like the previous one, because we have an equal amount of numbers here, we're going to take these two and we're going to div add them up and divide them. So, because these are the two here that we need to find the center for Q1. We're finding quartile one right now. 65 plus 73 equals 138 divided by 2 equals 69. So that right here 
is my Q1. Okay, there we go. We just took those two, we added them up. And we got that answer. All right. We're going to go ahead now and we're going to take these two because we have one, two, three, four, and we need to find the center here because we don't have an odd number. 87 plus 93 equals 180 divided by 2. That will be 90. So between these two numbers is quartile 3, 90. There we go. And you can tell because it's in between these two numbers. Now, if you had an 84 here as a quartile, then you pick the two incorrect numbers and you divide it incorrectly. Whenever you're finding the center of anything and you're taking numbers and dividing them, that center has to be in between these. So that number needs to fall in between the numbers that you're dividing. And then this quartile one is 69. Okay, perfect. Now we're going to find the range. And the range is taking the largest number and subtracting the smallest number. So we'll go ahead and write range. We're going to take 98 minus 63. <clears throat> 98 minus 63 equals 35. There's our range. Our Q1 is 69 Q2, I mean Q3, sorry, is 90. And the median is 81. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and find the mean, which is the average. That we worked on for a while, students, so you should be able to find that by adding up all the numbers. 63 plus 65 plus 73 plus 79 plus 81 plus 83 plus 87 plus 93 plus 98 equals, divided by nine pieces of data, 80.22. So my mean is 80. Point two two, and that should fall right in this area here which is very close that's the mean that's the average of all the numbers this is the center okay and they're almost usually sometimes pretty close to each other okay students so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take both numbers both A and B and put those uh, numbers together to see what we arrive at. Okay students, so in closing, uh, this did take us a while, but I wanted to go through each step with you to show you exactly how to do this because they do take a while. So there are several steps you need to take and you need to take your time. That's why I only gave you this one problem with these two areas. So we have room A and we have room B. And I went ahead and I wrote down all the information to save us time. And when you look at it and you compare both, they're pretty much uh, the same, aren't they? So the table shows a set of scores on a science test in two different classrooms. Compare and contrast the measures of variation. When you compare and contrast the median, room B had a higher median, a center of, uh, of 
of data, which means they had a higher number at only one point more. The uh, quartile one, quartile two, again, almost the same, only a point by a point fifth of a of a of the uh, decimal there, and um, that's the number between uh, the lowest to the middle of students that um, they got uh, that that the test scores for the students from the lowest to the middle are the variation is the same. Quartile three are the students who scored the highest uh, from the uh, center, which is like an average, which your average is 80. The average class received 80.55 on their test. Look at that, how close these are. Very close. And the range, the same. So when you look at these, this is how you put together data students, and this is how the measures of variations can help you in, in reading and interpreting data and then a lot of times uh, being able to go from that data to see what you can improve on to support and help um, the students in this class. This is what teachers would use. This is what we look at all the time with test scores. So right now we just completed this table and you did a great job. Remember to refer back to this video to do the step by step. I'm going to be assigning you some homework again on another link attached to this so please look for that and I'm going to give you another two set of problems. Thank you. Have fun.